<laughs> Hello and welcome to the TV enthusiast discussion of Hannibal. This week uh, we are going to be discussing it is episode 10 of the third season, third and final season of Hannibal and the woman clothed in sun. Uh, we call this uh, video we do every week. Um, Art Appreciation with Francis Dollarhide. We used to call it uh, Dinner with Hannibal, but we're on a new arc, so let's go with new the title. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, this week, uh, exciting ending, but we'll get to that last. <laughs> yeah, right. So let's start with how this episode starts. We see Francis Dollarhide breaking into a building. And he makes a phone call uh, through the building. And we find out that um, the reason he did that and everything directly relates to the last thing we saw um, in the last episode, which is one of the things I love about how Brian Flores handled Hannibal is that sometimes you see like one part of a conversation, but it doesn't kind of explain all the details. And then later on, you'll see something that kind of fills in. Yeah, it's cool to see the other half. Another thing that's cool is... Well, for, we we get the conversation from the end of the last episode where Hannibal's talking to Francis Dollarhide. And another cool thing about Brian Fuller is that Brian Fuller then puts the two in the same room together. Even though, like, narratively, story-wise, they're not, obviously. This is exactly but, what I was talking about in the last episode, too, was yeah. both... It, two things happened in this one scene that I, I mentioned. One was that I said, oh, it's a shame that we're not going to see Francis Dollarhide and Hannibal face to face. But then I remembered, oh, but it's Brian Fuller and he does it so trippy that, you know, we'll probably see it in some other form. And then this happened. <laughs> and then this happened. Yeah. But not only that, but remember I said, I want to see those paintings come to life. Yes. And we, we saw that, that too. We saw that, <laughs> Brian Fuller. Uh, we saw... We saw Francis Dollarhide as the Red Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> and we also saw the woman. Bathing. And Hannibal was kind of taking the place of the, in that image, he was taking the place of, I believe it's supposed to be the devil in, yep. well, the, I in like the painting. It, it, it's from the painting, uh, it, and the number of the beast is 666. It's, it continues like the sort of biblical themes that have been underpinning the entire season since it started. And how Brian Fuller kept throwing these hints at Hannibal being the devil. And that was just like a continuation of that, I thought. is like more Hannibal being the devil. <laughs> Which Brian Fuller has been doing all season. So yeah, it was a really cool scene. I loved how it built up to that shot. I knew that that was going to come. I'm like, this I is... Really Brian, really Brian Forrest, Hannibal, they're going to do something like that. I really love that conversation from that like perspective. Because if, if you buy into Hannibal's the devil, and Francis Dollarhide is his servant, or, you know, he's the red dragon serving the beast, the 666. I, I like, I really love that. It, it, like, it all comes together. Yeah. It's, you know, <laughs> it's really cool. Um, man, the way Brian Fuller frames this stuff is just awesome. <laughs> yeah, makes me a little sad. I'm like, yeah, oh. it does. <laughs> um, it's funny. Uh, um, I was just thinking, like, I, it's so such a shame that we're not going to get the Silence of the Lamb season. Because I'm like, God, do you know what they should have used for the promotional material for if they did a Silence of the Lamb season? Oh yeah, what's that? They, they have that commercial. I can't remember what it's for, but it's got that song goes in the background. You're so cute. I'm gonna wear you like a suit, and I'm like, That's <laughs> <laughs> I imagine if they use uh, it to promote uh, Buffalo uh, Bill. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> right. But yeah, let's let's go on um, to talk about more about what happened in this episode. Um, Much of this episode covers 
familiar ground, if you're familiar with the uh, other adaptations of the material, then you'll be familiar with many of the scenes in this episode. Mm -hmm. And it's mostly, again, it's like, it's an episode that takes a focus and puts it on a specific character. This time, much of the focus of the episode is on Francis Dollarhide. And you don't see much of the other characters. Although you do get a good amount with Will and Bedelia as well. Which is another part of the brilliance of the way that um, uh, Fuller put this episode together with it starting um, on Dollarhide introducing this other side of a conversation we just saw the beginning of. Right. And we're seeing the other side and how that came about as like our first transition into a, into an episode that really focused on Dollarhide, where um, a lot of the episodes, I mean, they've did a little bit of time to him, kind of, you know, like they've had moments where they're kind of following him, but this was like the first one that really focused on Dollarhide. I right, think. I think Dollarhide took up probably the most screen time of any other character in this episode. Yeah. Ah, but it was even the non Dollarhide stuff. There was a bunch of great stuff in there. First off, I finally realized that uh, the the blind girl that Dollarhide's with is from True Blood. <laughs> oh, okay. I knew it was somebody, and I, I, I the the voice kept getting me, and I'm like, ah, oh, where do I remember that from? And then I finally went, oh, True Blood. True and Blood. I just saw news uh, today, actually, that. She's like in, I guess, in talks to be cast in Arrow now. Oh, so she's in a show. That's gonna be interesting. Um, <laughs> so Hannibal is the new um, Spartacus, I guess. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Let's get Mads Mikkelsen as Arrow. Oh my God, <laughs> Mad should have been Ross Al Ghul. That would have been amazing. Oh <laughs> Miss yeah, they call, they call Ross Al Ghul the devil. That would be the real devil right there. Yeah, that would be the real devil. Oh, missed <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> oh, I missed that again. <laughs> uh, there's there's a lot of great roles that Mads could play. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cast an arrow, which who knows? I mean, this is, I think, the first American production he's even been involved in. I think so. Um, I mean, just Royale is British, so yeah, yeah. Oh, there, there's a there's a Western out right now that has him in it. Oh, there is. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, and King Arthur was a American production too, wasn't it? I think so. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. He was in that. He and Hugh Dancy were both in that. Yeah. Let's see. Just gotta try and find that. Uh. Yeah, it's called a, The Salvation. Hmm. Is that coming out or is that already out? I think it just came out. It's brand new. Uh, so it's 2014, but... Just like on Netflix or something? Um, I think it just came out on home video, yeah. Okay. Not Netflix. I don't think it's on Netflix yet. Huh. Uh, yeah, you can rent it on Amazon Instant Video. I'll shoot you the link. Oh, that's cool. There's Actually, the... I can rent that on Google Play, too, and I think I have a free rental through Google Play. So I might right. do that. Huh. Well, everybody, if you enjoy the performances of Mad Mc... Mads Mikkelsen, you can check out uh, The Salvation along with us. Yes. <laughs> I will watch anything this guy is in. I will go back and watch Casino Royale <laughs> just because of Mads now, even though I've already seen that long before Hannibal came out. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. Uh, that was I was so sad that he wasn't a Comic Con. That would have been if he had been a Comic Con, I would have definitely tried to get him to do a answering machine. Our voicemail message for me. <laughs> oh, just... Telling whoever called that, you know, I was indisposed and making some reference that the reason why is because I was being prepared as food or something. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, let's... So the other highlight of the episode, besides the stuff of Francis Dolahide, was the uh, conversation Will had with Bedelia, going in more in-depth into her character, her motivations, and also flashback to what happened 
with her patient that ended up yeah. dying right in front of her. Yeah. Uh, and we that was interesting. I thought he was going to be somebody that was kind of turned psychotic by Hannibal. That's kind of what was implied before. But right. it was much more interesting that he was this guy that, like, he saw kind of how fucked up Hannibal was, and he was having all this shit happening to him, and he's like, there's something wrong with him, and there's no mystery that he referred me to you. You're just as crazy as him. And and, and we, it's revealed through their con her conversation with Will that, in a way, she is just as crazy and messed up as Hannibal. That her first instinct is to crush. Yes, her first, his first instinct is to nurture. Right. I love that line, by the way, where she said, "The next time you come across, um, you know, a dying animal, and you're or something you feel like saving, right. and you have that instinct to to nurture, maybe you should crush instead." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is in reference to to Dollar Hide, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure that's a reference to Dollar Hide. Yeah, um, but it was it was all dialogue, but it was very very interesting to go back to her character, especially what happened with the first half of the season. It's like it's it, it shows that Brian Fuller is taking care. Of these plot threads and how everything works he's not you know it's not just like that arc's done so bedelia's done because she has nothing to do with the red dragon story it's yeah, like the, the uh, world of Hannibal is very living breathing it really yeah, feels real it really feels weird brian fuller takes care of that so these characters just don't disappear into the background to be never seen from it might seem that way sometimes like characters will vanish for extended periods of times but brian fuller always brings them back around to make sure that we're reminded that this is a living breathing world this is a continuous continuity type thing you know it's, and i really appreciate that Speaking of that, we got to see a, a, a reference to Chilton in this episode in a really cool way uh, yeah. with Hannibal finding a way to get Will's new address. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant and this, as always. And this, and, and this is a key scene that's in, that's in the novel. That's, this is a key scene for the story from the novel from both films where mm -hmm. Hannibal calls up and gets Will's address. Um, but in the other adaptations, he doesn't mention, he doesn't use Dr. Chilton as an excuse, and this one he did. Yeah. I thought that was kind of cute. That kind of threw me at first when he brought up Chilton. I'm like, oh, snap. And then I'm like, well, that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just everything kind of has to fit together, and he finds a great way of putting it all together. So um what else do we have that was really significant this episode a tiger tiger yes the tiger. <laughs> that was beautifully shot that was really that like was... the way they just oversaturated the colors right that was very nice um the tiger scene was awesome oh and we got we got another awesome brian fuller sex scene <laughs> <laughs> uh, brian fuller should brian fuller should direct a porno that'd be like that'd be the most visually interesting porno ever <laughs> yeah, kaleidoscopes and now we had a, a paintings coming to life and paintings coming to life yeah and it and you know what was awesome about that scene at the end when brian fuller when she actually became the woman bathed in light when Brian Fuller visualized that, that's the first time I actually realized that that was what that character was supposed to be analogous to. And like the other, like I was told you, I watched Red Dragon. And mm -hmm. I watched the whole movie. I never once realized that that character, that woman, was supposed to be analogous to the woman bathed in light in the Red Dragon painting until Brian Fuller kind of made it obvious and I feel like an idiot now. <laughs> so thank you for making me feel stupid, Brian Fuller. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great scene. Uh, a yeah. Great scene. 
Yeah. As as all scenes are under the direction of Brian Fuller. Yeah. Well, direction <laughs> under the supervision of Brian under Fuller. The supervision of Brian Fuller. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and we got oh we got the scene where uh, Dollar Hyde broke into the museum. He didn't, well, well, he didn't before break we that, it. Before yeah. we get to that, let's talk about why um, somebody else was headed towards the museum. <laughs> Because that's kind of building up to like the big kind of event at the end. Um, but what we did have at the um, is uh, the Red Dragons finally found a way to kind of communicate um, who he thinks he is to like the police. Right. The, uh, using the, what was it, the, the Mahjong piece for the Red Dragon. The, yeah, oh yeah, yep, the Mahjong piece for the Red Dragon. Um, so now he's kind of got, you know, Will's attention with that. And, uh, yeah, it's really cool. They, they did the, the carved into the building or whatever of the victims, the symbol. Um, and so then, uh, Will talked to Hannibal about it and figured out, uh, you know, of course, Hannibal leading him along. <laughs> yeah, yeah that uh um he should look at uh the, the portrait uh um the right the great red dragon painting uh that happened to be in the city um and then we cut to we see dollar hide actually checking out the real painting in the city getting a chance to get his you know to to look at it being told but you can't lay your hands on it and then bam knocks knocks the woman out <laughs> oh yeah yeah and what and what Francis Dollar Hyde does next will shock you. <laughs> he devours the painting. He, he, he eats the painting. He devours it. And I don't think I will go into the motivations for that because I don't think the episode makes it clear. I, don't, I think that's something they're planning to explain in the next episode. So I don't, I mean, people familiar with the story would know the motivation behind that. But as far as this episode goes, if you're just watching the show, I don't think the motivation behind that is entirely clear at the moment. Yeah. So I don't know if I want to go into that. But yeah, he devours the painting. And well, that we can't it, think he's obsessed with it and stuff. You're right. Well, he's obsessed with it. But there's a specific reason why he devours the painting. Yeah. It's not, it's not as simple as he's obsessed with it. Um, but... <laughs> he devours the painting, and that's shocking. And the way they do it too, um, this show just shows how like such excellent acting Richard Armitage has had. Um, with <laughs> I always I always say uh, I don't want to come off sounding too much of a fanboy of the series when I say this, but for me at least, I'm not a fanboy. You're an enthusiast. I'm an enthusiast. <laughs> but for me, at least, it seems to me like Richard Armitage in this series has embodied the role of the Red Dragon as much as Mads is Hannibal to me now. Yeah. I look at the performance in, like, uh, Red Dragon, and I'm like, yeah, Ralph Fiennes, he, he did a good job. And I watch Richard Armitage, I'm like, but he's doing a better job. <laughs> this guy is the red dragon. <laughs> yeah, we got that with with uh, uh, Mads as Han Hannibal. We got that now with Dollar Hyde, but we also got that with Will Graham. Yeah, with Will Graham, which I think Hugh Dancy is also the real. Will I don't Graham. think anybody's brought Will Graham to life well, like he has. I mean, it's it's you know, I mean, in all fairness, it's not very hard to uh, outdo uh, you know. Ed Norton's very bland performance in that role. Ed Norton <laughs> was like very bland in that movie. He, but you also had the other guy in Manhunter. That, yeah, I haven't, uh, well, I haven't seen Manhunter, so I can't like comment on that um, personally. But yeah, Hugh Dancy is Will Graham <laughs> and Mads Mikkelsen as Hannibal, and now uh, Richard Armitage is Dollar Eyed. Uh, which says a lot about Brian Fuller and his act in his direction and his choice of actors his and choice of actors. You know, he he knows how to pick excellent actors and he knows how to get the best out of them. Uh, obviously. 
<laughs> so that was a great scene. And then the ending to that scene, the ending threw me because this did not happen in the movie. Um, this was kind of a this was kind of a twist on events. Well, Hannibal. Um, well, uh, not Hannibal. Well, Dollar Hoyd's enjoying a nice meal. Um, <laughs> somebody else arrives to uh, yes. take a look at the painting. <laughs> yes, Will, Will Graham arrives to check out the painting. And Will the susses lead. out. Will susses out uh, Dollar Hyde like immediately. Right. He him in the peripheral of his eye, and he knows that this is the guy. <laughs> this does not happen in the movie. In the movie, Will Graham shows up at the museum, but he doesn't. Like he doesn't encounter Dollar Hyde, you know. Um, so he doesn't find out who Dollar Hyde is at that moment. So this was kind of different where Will Graham susses him out and he recognizes him. And Dollar Hyde escapes. He just kicks Will up and he body slams him. <laughs> and then he runs. And that, that and then it ends. And I was like, holy, what? <laughs> I was like, whoa, I was not expecting that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could, he should be able to scrub through and find videos of him too of them arriving at this place right exactly uh, yeah, they got him kind of covered now so now yeah. when his when dollar hides blind girl sees his face on the oh wait no no <laughs> <laughs> well that won't happen <laughs> obviously this isn't the end this isn't the end of the story just yet there's still three more episodes there's mm -hmm. still stuff that has to happen to get to the climax. Um, so, no, this isn't the point where Dollar Hyde is supposed to be captured. Um, but <laughs> it was interesting that that happened because, yeah, I wonder if uh, I wonder if that happened in the book, if that's, like, more true to the book than the film. Right? It just, it's really interesting how Fuller's adapted the book. It's Fuller, or, or Fuller just did this just because... He he wanted to surprise people who might who were familiar with the story and might have been getting a little smug with what they think was going to happen. Yeah, because that was a good and that was excellent. Uh, <laughs> that was like an you know, old crap moment for me. <laughs> just seeing poor Will just get chucked like that. Oh man, that was brutal. <laughs> physical intimidation of. Uh... Yeah. Francis Dollarhide. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a great episode again, as all episodes of Hannibal have been. Uh, <laughs> I don't think there's ever been an episode of Hannibal where I'm like, yeah, this is not good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Yeah. This is <laughs> even, even the bad episodes of Hannibal are like good by the standards of most other shows. Right. They're only bad by the standards of Hannibal, you know, which is amazing uh yeah uh that pretty much brings us to an end of our discussion now let's talk a little bit about um what's coming up we got three episodes left um we know that the uh next episode is called well, i got the titles for the next uh two episodes next file is called and the beast from the sea which is the third painting in the series uh in the red dragon series and the last one is called The Number of the Beast is 666, um, which is the painting we saw come to life with Hannibal and yeah. Dollar Hyde at the beginning of the episode. Uh, and that, there's, there's no more paintings in the series. So, and I don't see any listing for episode 13 and what its title is yet. So, so is this a 12 episode season? No, it's supposed to have 13, so we just don't know what the 13 episode is called yet. Interesting. Um, I don't know if it's going to be another painting, you know? I mean, um, who knows? <laughs> I I have a feeling that it's, like I, I talked about before, that I think that Hannibal's going to escape. Yeah, I don't think this isn't going to end like the way people expect it to end. I think, mm -hmm. I think that, again... If you feel like you know the material, if you've read the novel, and if you watch both adaptations, if you're watching this thinking, you know, you're pretty set. I think uh, 
I think Ryan Fuller is going to throw a screwball at you at the at the very end. And I think the focus is going to shift back to Hannibal. I think the focus is going to shift back to Hannibal. Yeah, away from Dollar Hyde and back to Hannibal. And I think so. I think that the last episode is going to have another cuisine title. Oh, it's maybe in line with you know the Hannibal uh, arc and the way that that was uh, named. Right, I think that would kind of fit perfectly. I'm I have no inside information. I'm just purely yeah, speculating just here. Speculation but. here. Yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, it almost feels like, oh, that'd be so awesome. You know, you get there and it trades back and just the way the naming sense works with it. And, yeah, it, it feels like to me that's what they'd um, do. But I don't know. Uh, Hannibal's a series that surprises me frequently. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. It's very... I didn't, I didn't see Will getting his head cut into coming at all. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a lot of me. Uh, they, yeah, that was like, oh my god, what are they doing? <laughs> and then, and man, it was just, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it, that that was like really trippy when that happened because Will's head starts getting cut into, and then there's like all imagery. And then they're at Muskrat Farm somehow, and you're like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> that was the exact same thing I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, reaction so far. Uh, best season? Second best, best season? What do you think? Uh, second best season? Um... I don't know. I, I'm going to go with second best season. I don't think it, it's going to top season two, but really freaking good so far. And yeah, also- I'd, I'd say so. This I'd say the same. Uh, I think the the early episodes of this season, which were actually seem to be the most divisive, for some reason. I don't I don't get that. Uh, the first like three or four episodes of the season are I think the like some of the best episodes of Hannibal. Period. Like, right, you know, only topped by maybe two of last season's episodes, maybe you know, maybe. Uh, and uh, you know the the Red Dragon stuff. It, I lo- I like it. It doesn't get me as much as the more Hannibal focused side of the stuff, you know. Um, Probably because also most of this is familiar. Yeah, that's you know. that's true as well. Um, it's interesting that if this series had continued. The next season was going to be all original, non-book-related material. That would have been awesome. I mean, Um, technically, this entire season was book material, even the way they did, because even though the first half wasn't a direct adaptation of any particular novel or story, like mm -hmm. this is, like so far the Red Dragon arc, this is a direct adaptation even though the first half season wasn't a direct adaptation, it still combined elements from Hannibal and Hannibal Rising, those novels. So it was still heavily based on book material. Mm -hmm. Um, So it would be really interesting to see what they did with all season of just their own material, using these characters with fresh material. That would have been interesting. Which makes me sad again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so much sadness. But um, I, I had to break the news about Hannibal being canceled to a, a friend at his going away party a week ago. <laughs> and he was drunk and he just kept going, like, I don't care. Hannibal's canceled. What the hell? <laughs> he was like kind of belligerent about it, you know? <laughs> <didn't care> about <laughs> it. Yeah. Uh, well. We got American Gods coming up. Yeah, I'm looking that's, forward to that. Neil Gaiman and Brian exciting. Fuller. Neil Gaiman and Brian Fuller. That's an exciting combination. You yeah. can't not be excited for that. On a premium network too, so. Oh uh, yeah, on premium, so they won't be able to hold back. <laughs> Brian Fuller can make more graphic kaleidoscopes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Just kaleidoscopic dreams have come true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> so yeah, that'll bring our discussion to an end. So uh, thanks for listening, everybody. You can check out our website, tventhusiast.com. I am Tyson. I am the editor-in-chief. Joining me today was William. He is our news director on the site. Um, check out our articles. Um, you know, listen to our podcast. It, uh, we record it every Thursday, uh, usually every Thursday. Uh, it goes up eh, and, you know, however long it takes me to edit it basically determines when it goes up. I put it up as soon as I'm done. The last one went up, I believe, on Sunday. So um, Sunday night, I think, maybe. I don't know. Uh, and this one, uh, this week's episode might go up on Friday, might go up sometime after that. But yeah, uh, we're, we're plugging away on that. We're almost at 22 episodes of the podcast. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh, wow. I can't believe it. We're going to have to do something special for the 25th. Maybe we'll do Advocates of Great Television again or maybe yeah. another show club. We'll have to do something. We'll have to do something cool. Yeah, the problem with Advocates of Great Television is I haven't seen too many things that <laughs> other people haven't seen. And so it's like, you know, I don't, I don't have like this list, this list of like these really awesome shows nobody knows about that I've seen. Um, <laughs> so it's really hard for me to come up with something for that. We um, could do, we could do something else. We could do a show club or we could do, we'll, we'll have to figure something cool out. Cool. Show, to do. Club, show club would be cool. We haven't done that in a while. Yeah. We did last one we did was Twin Peaks. So that, right. that, that would be a big one. So we'd have to pick a show and. <laughs> schedule all that out so we have a little time though uh, so. the only thing about doing a show called the twin peaks was like the pressure of having to like watch six hours of a tv show in a week um, yeah that was six hours when it was regular episodes and they're like the two hour episodes yeah i know <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, so look forward to that. If you uh, enjoy our conversations on Hannibal, you might want to check out what we're doing on our podcast. We don't really talk about Hannibal too much because we talk about it here. Uh, we'll kind of talk more about like on the, the news topic or about the production, but less about the show itself. Um, but we talk about a lot of other stuff. We talk about Arrow. We talk about um, the Arrowverse and the Marvel the MCU stuff related to TV. Um, we do little cool things. We talked about advocates of great television before. That's where we each recommend a show and we all watch it. So yeah, check those out on our podcast. And uh, yeah, you can get those on iTunes or any of the podcast agents like um, Radio FM or um, uh, uh, Pocket Cast or any other kind of uh, service like that. With it goes based on the RSS feed. It'll find our podcast. Just look it up as TV Enthusiast and you'll find it. It's called The Weekly Set is the name of the podcast. Um, so that brings us to a close. Uh, thank you, everybody, again for watching our little video. And uh, we'll be back next week for some more Hannibal discussion. Bye. Bye. <laughs>